This morning we're on our way to Cal Cub. Skull Skull Tubo. Skull Skull Tubo. Skull Tubo. Skull Tubo. So because we're on our way back from Batumi, on our way to Tbilisi. This is the last time we went through these types of areas was when it was in the middle of winter, so it was icy, it was cold, there wasn't a lot of uh, green and everything, so it's a little bit greener through here now. Anyway, so we're gonna see if we can make an adventure out of today. So join us on this possible adventure. We were drawn to the rich history and captivating architecture within the abandoned buildings in Skaltubo. Back in its Soviet heyday, Skaltubo was the place to be, drawing crowds including Joseph Stalin, who had his own dacha there. The town was dotted with impressive sanatoriums and bathhouses, all built in grand classical styles that really showed off its glamour. But after the Soviet Union collapsed, things got tough economically and many of those once majestic buildings started to crumble. We wanted to see just what's become of these buildings after 30 years, how they've stood the test of time and to catch a glimpse of their past glory. So we're at the Sanatorium Medea. Sanatorium Medea is like a page out of a history book, frozen in time. Named after a mythic Georgian figure, this place was a hot spot during the Soviet era, built to offer a luxurious retreat with its therapeutic thermal waters. Picture the elites of the time, even Stalin himself, walking its grand halls and relaxing in the opulent style. After the Soviet Union fell apart, Medea, like many grand buildings of its kind, slid into a bit of a sleepy decay. But visiting it now, you can still feel the echoes of its glamorous past and imagine the stories those old walls could tell if they could talk. The concept for Sanatorium Medea was envisioned as part of Joseph Stalin's broader plan in the 1930s to transform Tkal Tubo into a health resort destination for the Soviet elite. The sanatorium was designed to harness the therapeutic qualities of the local mineral waters for recuperation and relaxation.
although construction on many sanatoriums was underway before and during the early years of World War II, the war efforts saw some of them, including likely the Medea, being repurposed to serve as hospitals for wounded soldiers, underscoring the strategic importance of these facilities. In the post-war period, Caltubo and facilities like Sanatorium Medea experienced significant expansion and renovation. This was part of a Soviet campaign to promote the health benefits of spa treatments to the wider populace, not just the elite. During the height of its operation, Sanatorium Medea was more than just a place for physical health. It also served as a cultural hub. The sanatorium hosted various social events, including dances and concerts, making it a vibrant part of the social life in Soviet Georgia. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Sanatorium Medea, like many state-run enterprises, faced neglect and decline. Without the government's subsidies and maintenance, the grandeur of the sanatorium faded and it was largely abandoned by the late 1990s, leaving it a shell of its former self until recent interest in redevelopment.
we're now at bathhouse number eight. Yes. So this is a closed down bathhouse, right? Yes, and literally 100 meters next to it is spring number six, which is still fully operational. So here we go. Bathhouse number eight has quite the charming backstory. Wrapped up in the grand spa culture of the Soviet era, designed as part of the ambitious plan to turn Skaltubo into a therapeutic paradise. This particular bathhouse was crafted to stand out with its exquisite details and luxurious offerings. Known for its beautiful architecture, including classical motifs and intricate decor, bathhouse number eight was where many came to soak in the naturally warm, mineral-rich waters believed to have healing powers. So I would assume there would be springs in the middle yes. and then people would lay in their own bathtub. During the Soviet days, it wasn't just a place for healing, it was a social scene. Imagine people from all walks of life, from local workers to high-ranking officials, chatting away and unwinding in the steamy, soothing baths. The atmosphere must have been a unique blend of relaxation and discreet networking, all set against the soundtrack of echoing water. After the fall of the Soviet Union, like much of Tskaltubo, bathhouse number 8 faced a period of neglect with nature slowly reclaiming the once bustling spaces. Today, visiting this place is like stepping into a serene and slightly eerie time capsule. I was just thinking now, it actually feels like they keep this clean. Do you see? Like, I mean, it's swept. It is a historical landmark. A dacha is a seasonal or year round second home, often located in the excerpts of post Soviet countries, including Russia. Stalin's dacha in Skaltubo, however, is a fascinating piece of history and is nestled amidst lush greenery. So, we're at, here at Stalin's Dacha. Um, Anya, do you know anything about this place? I know it was one of his vacation homes in Tsilkal Tubo, but that's about it. This discreet hideaway was part of Stalin's network of residences across the Soviet Union, specially chosen for its strategic seclusion and the therapeutic properties of the local mineral waters. The dacha itself is modest compared to the grandeur of some of his other homes, designed to blend into the surrounding landscape with its low-profile, rustic appearance. 
Stalin was walking this path once upon a time and here we are walking exactly the same path which is kind of cool and some people here recently Stalin in Stalin's vacation. <laughs> During its heyday, it wasn't just a retreat for Stalin, but also a venue for secretive political maneuverings and important decision-making sessions away from the public eye. This adds a layer of intriguing, if somewhat chilling, history to the tranquil setting. Assuming this was a sort of a pool. It's a fireplace.
that hard to get into. After Stalin's death in 1953, the Dacha continued to serve as a governmental retreat, but never with the same level of exclusivity. Over the decades, it gradually fell into disuse and disrepair, reflecting the changing priorities and economic challenges of the post-Soviet era. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, Stalin's Dacha has attracted curious visitors and history buffs alike, drawn by the blend of its natural beauty and historical mystique. Today, it stands as a silent witness to the complexities of Soviet history, offering a unique glimpse into the private life of one of history's most notorious figures. It's a bad wallpaper. 